Hello and welcome to the Property Roundup here on iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon. The show where we chat to industry experts to get a view and activity on the ground and to learn about new trends emerging. This show is sponsored by DAF.ie, Ireland's most visited property website. And as I mentioned, generally we talk to experts who have a lot of experience or know their marketplace inside out. And we talk a lot about the business of a state agency. Today, I want to talk about the future of the business of a state agency. And for that, I wanted to speak to the next generation of talent coming up through the ranks. I'm delighted to be joined by Grace Hanley, apprentice auctioneer and property services provider. Grace, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks very much for having me, Carol. I really appreciate it. Uh, I am so happy to speak to people, uh, apprentice, or people who've just come through the apprenticeship route, um, you know, to, to understand why people are choosing uh, property as a career. Personally, I don't know why they wouldn't. Um, <laughs> it's similarly with construction, I think it's a wonderful career, but I'm always interested to know what brings people into it and also your almost early impressions of the industry. So first of all, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Um, so I'm from Tipperary and I would come from a farming background, I suppose, originally. Um, and my mother would have been a teacher as well. So I suppose very rural uh, upbringing that I had. But um, I've been blessed, I suppose, in so many ways that in my upbringing, I was always pushed to challenge myself and go a little bit further. Um, and if I wasn't enjoying something or it didn't, it didn't get, get me excited to get up in the morning or whatever, I got, my parents would often kind of say to you, change it so you know if, if yeah. you don't like it change it and, and make the change now while you still can and even if I felt a little bit older coming back into property I suppose as a mature student um, I, I was a bit concerned about doing and changing a whole different you know industry really but I have to say everything in my previous jobs and that it does play into it so as a mature student I kind of had a bit more of an advantage I'd have a bit of life behind me um so I suppose it was great really and um, to get myself into it it would have kind of started I everyone has an interest in property we've always seen the pretty houses on selling sunset and different Irish cheap homes and all the different shows that you'd see but I for myself I just found it very interesting um and I just wanted to know a bit more about it and I wasn't exactly sure what I liked about it so the apprenticeship was just a fantastic opportunity because you get a broader scale of it um, and as well, having previously studied at third level, I was kind of anxious about going back to to a college um, and I was facing at my age anyway, I was facing the immigrate or educate myself. Um, and when the apprenticeship option came up, it just was a phenomenal way of doing it so I can educate myself and I can earn a living at the same time. Yeah. Um, so it really was just the, the only option I saw once I saw it, that was it. I was doing it and, and I wanted to be into it. Well, um, you're, you're definitely citing um, uh, inspirations from either end of the spectrum there. If when you go from cheap Irish homes to selling sunset. Yeah. I, so where on that spectrum is uh, the property market in both temporary uh, or Dublin? Uh, well, cheekers, there there are very different scales there now. Dublin is a very different scale to to Tipperary. Tipperary is a bit more modest in 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 some senses. Um, right. but I suppose in all sales, it's it's completely dependent on what people are willing to pay and what you're willing to get. Um, and I suppose I wouldn't be the expert on it. It's why I'm still on the apprentice um apprentice title for all the world. But it's something I loved. I love learning more about and why what drew you know, values to it and what made something worth what it is worth. Um, I suppose, and it, learning so much about the supply and demand and why there was a demand in other places higher than in, I'd say, in my home in Tipperary. Um, and the fact that there was so much more available in Dublin versus Tipperary was yeah. that playing into it. But honestly, since I've started, just the economics behind it all has, I kind of tailgated into that. I, I've, I've kind of fallen into the rabbit hole of, of listening to that, again, inspired by one of my lectures in, in college. Um, but I, I suppose that was the whole point. I wanted to get to learn yeah. why, what's the difference in the scales and why is there a difference in cheap homes versus these luxury, yeah. fabulous villas that you see on telly. Um, I'm getting to see, experience it as well, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the interesting thing I think you'll find is that it, you know, people from the outside might assume that it's just price. You know, if you have a high budget, you choose such a property. If you have a lower budget, you choose the property within that. But actually, 
lifestyle, choice, urban versus rural, you know, these are all factors that play in. Um, and, and it's a great thing it is because if everybody wanted the same type of property, we'd have no choice, no diversity in the market. So exactly. um, it, it's a good thing that it is. And I, I suppose the same is true of agents. If all agents were the same, there'd be no diversity of choice for the, the vendors when they're choosing who is going to sell their home. And I think your background is so interesting. Um. So your first degree or your, your first foray into third level, that was in ceramic design. Ceramic design, yeah, in Limerick School of Art and Design. Um, it was absolutely fantastic course. I loved it. Um, I did fall in the, the category that COVID hit just as I was coming towards an end of it. Um, so it did take a little bit away from it. But I suppose it, it helped me in a way because it, it sent me home. It put me on the path of thinking. Um, and I also just started working um, so I've always I've always been working full like as much as I could when I was in education I was always working weekends or whether it be bar work or when I was working in stables and things like that and I always had a kind of a grounded look at these things so I saw how much it cost me to be educating um, to be educating myself and how much it was going to improve my life um, and where it was going to get me to next so I was well, constantly looking for that like Grace, you glossed over some really interesting stuff there. Um, you know, you, you talked about when you were working as a bar, which many students do. Um, I did it myself for years and always loved it. But you also worked as a groom in Aidan O'Brien stables and did, yeah. and as a spray painter. I can tell you now I've never met anybody, a, any estate agent who has worked as a groom and a spray painter. <laughs> Again, you're really hitting the extremes here. So actually, tell me a little bit about the work that you've been doing, because I think all of this feeds into a really interesting um, uh, estate agent that you will become, that you're really going to be, have this diverse set of interests. Yeah. Now, look, I suppose um, it all did play into, into it eventually. Um, you meet every sort of character when you are selling homes because everyone either purchases a home or rents a property or they, everyone has a roof over their head. Um, and you'd, you'd meet people that would have a common interest there, whether they be into the horse industry or they're into mechanics and they're into whatever you're, you know, what, what I was doing was anything from lorry beds to um, things like that and compactors, mulchers. That's what I was spraying. So when you would meet someone, they'd say, oh, God, that was so interesting. Tell me more. It's a common little kind of, for all the words, it starts the conversation and it's a comfort for you, too. And you need a little bit of life to be able to talk to someone about something so serious because at the end of the day, buying a property or whether it be finding a home for rent, even it is a huge choice because it's where you're going to be situated. It's your home, you know, so you like to be comfortable when you're talking to the person that you're going to be dealing with. And that's helping you on that journey. Um, and I suppose that's it's, it's one thing that I was grateful for that I got out and I, I did see a lot of life and I did get a bit of work experience in behind me before coming into this industry. Um, and I can have that human level for all the world to be able to relate to someone previous or prior to to getting down to business and going right. OK, well, this is the this is the next step for you. And if if this is what you're interested in and if you want to pursue this, these are the next steps. And they're, they can question it a bit easier. I find at that point when they're a bit more comfortable with you to say, God, I, I've never done this. What what's this about? Why do you need to do this? Yeah. Sometimes I'm very honest and I don't know. Because again, I'm an apprentice and I'm happy to say to someone, I don't know, but I will find out. And that's another thing that was great. And it was kind of, it was humbling, but it was also a great start for myself to kind of say, well, not everybody knows everything, but if you're willing to learn and you're willing to find out for someone, they'll give you more time. And I suppose I took that as well um, to, to heart and always kind of said to myself, I'll never be on, I'll never lie to someone and say, oh, this is why it, it is. If I don't know, I don't know. Um, and I suppose mentors throughout my starting of my career and starting the friendship and up until now, that was also instilled in me as well to if you don't know, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You, you can find out. Just, you know, say that. Be honest with them. And my parents as well, they were very much so of the honest style. You know, yeah. you have to keep to your own honest sense and keep yourself that you're very, you know, trustworthy um, because, again, it's huge huge yeah. thing to be doing some people only do it once in their life um so you'd like to have someone that you're comfortable with to do so 
Uh, you're absolutely right. And I think that's a really good attitude and mantra, you know, and to be able to say, I don't know, but I'll find out for you. And by the way, I, I, I'll i make it easier for you. You are there's always going to be things you don't know. And in fact, there are no experts in all areas of the property market, because actually, as I'm sure you know, at this stage, the property market is made up of so many sectors across the regions that actually there is no one expert in all of it. And actually, I'm so lucky in my day job. I get to speak to people who are really expert in their niche, but they're expert in their niche and they know it. And, and that's what they talk about. They don't try to cover everything else. Um, so I know at this stage in your career, it's it's too early maybe to to get into any particular niche. But um, in time, that might be something you do, whether it's rural and country homes or um, indeed equestrian properties. Um when you went back to do the apprenticeship, and I, I, I think it's hilarious that you refer to yourself as a mature student because you are still very young. Um, I'll, take that. I'll take that, Carl. Thank you. <laughs> I say that having gone back to do a master's in planning uh, in my mid forties, you, you're very young. But actually, I think it's interesting that you said you're kind of at the age where you either, you know, um, go down a different path or you emigrate. Because actually. I found on my master's program that uh, being being the most seasoned in the room, uh, the the regular aged uh, students, I was surprised at how many of them not just were considering emigration, but they really felt that was probably their only option. In fact, um, many of the well, it was a small class, but um, you know, I, I know some of the people spoke about home, you know, for whatever rural or, or market towns they were, that there were so few young people left that they had actually emigrated. Like uh, people were emigrating your age, were emigrating in groups. And I, yeah. I wasn't really aware of that. Down in Templemore, is that something, have you experienced that amongst your peer group? Yeah, Um. so it, it is very, very much so that that kind of situation currently at home. Um, for myself, I know over I, well over half of my group of friends would be have immigrated at this point. Um, and whether they're working in the field that they studied or they're working in a completely different area, whether it be mines in Australia or if they're gone into teaching in Dubai or different, completely different areas, which I, I actually have so much admiration for them because in my own in my own um, life, moving up to Dublin, I found that literally like, and I've, I've moved and had no problem living up north or whatever prior, but moving to Dublin at this point in my life, I was going, I'm only starting to settle at home. I'm starting to enjoy being at home. I'm, you know, I've gone through the teenage years of wanting to get away and the early twenties of where you're going, oh, get me out quick as soon as you can. I'm at the age where I've, I've my nephew is at home and I want to see him growing up and that. Yeah. So again, like that, I, I was, of course, mad to go abroad because I had so many friends going there. And it did feel like one of those things that I, that was my only option. Um, and it was the only pathway that was was really bright for me for all the world. Um, and it, again, only that I, I somehow, by the look of God, I found the, the apprenticeship options. And I had never previously considered an apprenticeship because I always assumed it was a, a craft or something like, you know, construction or, or electrical or whatever it was. But I just popped up on it that it was the apprenticeship for auctioneering. And there was a few other business ones and things. But the auctioneering really caught my eye. Um, I suppose, it, again, like that, having I had a little bit of an interest into it. And I did a bit of research. I contacted, I found out when my uh, a local guy that I knew had previously done the course. And I contacted him immediately. And I just said, "What? what's it like? What's it about? What are you doing now? What job opportunities can I get out of it? And he was absolutely glowing references from it saying fantastic. it was fantastic to get into it if you can get into the course to go 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 and I, I took I took that advice and I took the advice of my mom and I applied and I, I got in and again I when I say I've sent out enough CVs to get into a place that I made sure I was getting a, a, a mentor or a workplace that was going to take me on um, and Michael and Michael Martin he, he took me on and he took me under his wing and he mentored me up um, and I, I'm forever grateful for giving me the start into it, um, I suppose, as well, because that's what it was. It was my start into the property and it was first insights. So yeah. I'm down as, as little as tell me what a freehold and leasehold is in a property to, yeah. you know, explaining where we get the value and asking me every time we go out to house before looking at it, going, what do you think this is worth? You yeah. know, and 
little things like that brought it on and brought me onto the stage where I am. And like, again, like I said, I don't, I know way, shape, form, feel like I know it a lot. Um, but I'm very, very humble in the fact of I know I need to learn. And the apprenticeship gave me that option that I go into college on it once a week. So it was a it was a kind of a a mixture of on site and on um online learning. So there was for three weeks in the month you're on site and one week in the month you're you're online. So you could have a hectic week or like you could have three or four questions in your head going, I've no idea why I'm doing this or how I'm doing this. And you might be a little bit embarrassed to say it in work. You can ask in the college. You could have a question that someone in work mightn't have known and you're going, I'm trying to research and I don't know where to go. You can, again, you can ask in college, you can ask your peers. There was a yeah. class, a small class. And we were just are really lucky in, in my class as well. They're all great friends of mine now. Um, even our WhatsApp group is still going like, and we'd send in the odd group chat. And it's just been, I landed on my feet in some ways and where I got, where I, I ended up with it. But um, yeah, no, I took every, every chance I, I was given I took it and if I could go to a, a conference or something, I was I was there. If I could go to see something or go out to courses, I, I took every one of those and I was blessed. I, I, every time I did do it, it stood to me. Um, yeah. You know, whether it was podcast being suggested in college, I went home and I listened to it and I just soaked as much as I could yeah. in. Um, and I, I, I suppose it's it's standing to me now that I'm, I'm starting to... I'm not climbing the ladder, but I'm starting to move up and go, okay, I'm getting more experience and I'm learning more and I'm able to take in more because I have the basics. Yeah. Um, and that's what the apprenticeship is about. It's about getting you the basics in learning and you're, you've physically done it. So you're doing it on the daily. Um, yeah. So it's really sitting in because I'm a visual learner and I like, if I do something, it stays with me, whereas I read it, not always. Yeah. Um, so having that mixture, is, it was just fantastic. It was a hands-on learning kind of a, a situation. So, yeah. Oh, Grace, that is so fantastic to hear. You know, um, I, I am a huge advocate for apprenticeships. And, and this year and last year, um, the the new apprenticeship scheme has been broadened so much that actually um, for the first time in decades now we do have apprenticeships and things like accountancy and civil engineering and, and things that we never had is some that we never had apprenticeships in before so yes it's still the traditional crafts which we absolutely need and the trades which we absolutely need yeah. um, but it's much broader as well which I think is amazing because Actually, I think our CAO and points raise post leaving search really kept some uh, people who would be really good fit for a career, kept them out of it. Um, yeah. And not always because of the points, but just by the almost lottery system of the yeah. CAO. So you're such an advocate uh, for the apprenticeship scheme. So I, I'm so delighted to hear you say that. And I shouldn't be surprised because you were, of course, nominated um uh, as one of the apprentices of the year this year which is a massive achievement how how did that recognition come about um well I, I'm assuming it was the college that put me forward so they've been fantastic college were phenomenal and supporting um from everyone from the course director Jane to principals within like uh, Helen and, and Brian and to the Finbar and the canteen crew they were just everyone there was very supportive um, and they we were put forward with that and I got the opportunity to speak at the RDS uh, at the World Skills Competition and we were up on the Hero stage just talking with Apprenticeship Ireland uh, which is fantastic and if anyone is listening to this and is thinking about apprenticeships or has someone in their family thinking about it do go on and have a look um, everyone in it is fantastic there's so many more options there than there ever was before um, but yeah, they were, they're just, we were put forward with that and got the opportunity to speak and we were taken up to, uh, Manson, is Mansion House in, in yeah. Dublin. Um, and we had an award ceremony there. We were gifted with the certificate for excellent in our, excellence in our, in our course. Um, and we were recognized afterwards as well within the college too. So it was, it was huge for me because I suppose coming back, I was a little bit less confident and seeing that the work that I was putting into it and like that going home, listening to things and soaking in the information that it was coming back to me and it was recognized and I might be petty or whatever, but it was something that drove me on for another year to go. I am doing well. You know what? This is working for me and it. I am enjoying this. This is exactly what I want to be doing. And it, it's kept me, it kept me going, you know, 
Uh, because it's very easy, I find in, I know myself when I was in third level, it's very easy to slip off in the huge numbers. And you can just, if you have a, a bad couple of weeks and you can go scaways for all the world. Yeah. Whereas with the apprenticeship, it's it's so on top of you. You're It's a smaller group. It's one-on-one mentorship. If you're out for a week, you know, I I, I people there that were out and I was class rep, I was looking to be class rep. They text you and ask you for the notes and you you could send it off. If I was gone out for a day, I could send in a message or as late. It was very small. You know, it was very one on one and I was more hands on with each other and learning. Whereas if what the bigger groups just didn't seem to suit me, I suppose you're kind of lost in it. Um, but yeah, I'd been nominated for that really just gave me, a, I suppose, a boost as well to keep myself going and, and put the pressure on to, to learn as much as I could um, and get as much out of the apprenticeship as, as I could as well. That's really powerful. And I, I hope for anybody listening in, not just uh, for people listening in that they might have an interest, but actually one of the things we saw um, more so for construction than property, but actually um, in the last 18 months, uh, uh, a report by SkillsNet showed uh, and the CIF actually showed that it's not just about raising awareness of uh, the industry and careers in the industry uh, for primary and secondary level students, but actually there was an a, there was almost an education process that had to happen for their parents because their parents tended to be the generation that were maybe more most deeply impacted by the last crash, and yeah. so therefore thought that property of all sectors and typologies and construction were maybe not particularly safe careers. So actually, it's fantastic to hear you talk about it in such positive terms. Also to use the word scaways because no one has ever used that on the podcast before. And it brings me right back to my farming days. So we definitely need more farmers on the podcast. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. Um, again, I'm interested, like it's fantastic to talk to you, but I want to know who who are like the next generation of talent coming into the industry. So tell me a little bit about the people who were on the course with you. Um, were, you know, was there a good cross section of genders, ages, ethnicities? backgrounds yeah. disciplines couldn't have been more of a mixed group if, if, if i'm honest with you Carrie. Fantastic. um we've anyone from just out of school to my my vice um class rep johnny he he was back at 54 don't kill me now johnny for saying that <laughs> he's happy enough to have the crack with yeah. me and give it back but uh we it was all age groups you know within that so i it was never that anyone was left out there was everyone had someone and a good there. gender balance very very mixed so i'd say nearly fully 50 50 um which i was shocked by I, I, if i'm honest with you um and i was shocked at how big the group was but how mixed it was and how well we all got on for being that mixed you know from the ages of 54 down to to 80 19 how we all gelled and were able to have you know a bit of crack we went out we organized it and i will ironize a couple of nights of just networking and having like celebrations for Christmas or finishing up our exams to say well done and we've done it like you know but it was it was just they've been they were brilliant um always up for the crack and all of them were just really talented people I have to say they're going to be connections for the rest of my life anyway um you know and that whatsapp group that we have going I'm sure will be kept going for many years just with whether it be questions to each other of we have a, a tenant here that would be trying to locate into so-and-so any chance you have something coming up you have something for rent anything you're you know we've often send each other kind of references and going hey just to let you know and that's that's what the property industry is all about it's yeah. about getting building each other up and we'll always have to pull off each other you know we will never like you said nobody will know everything um so you have to use your friends and your your network to get that information and to help you along yeah um, well information and referrals because yeah. these are all people who will be renting and buying and selling and they know people who will be renting and buying and selling and if you have yeah. that geographic spread as well um you know it'll become a nice little uh you know exchange of maybe first instructions um exactly. for, yeah. for people so but that's fantastic and um, maybe tell us a little bit about the firms uh that you were working in throughout the apprenticeship um so i started in dng michael and martins in nina um it would have been a smaller uh just sales based uh a real estate uh, agency and then i moved to uh pj broderick uh auctioneers in thurless he would have been against sales but it would have also tipped into uh 
residential lettings and more agricultural side as well so we do a lot of uh, agricultural leases um, and things like that which I found very interesting having had the farming background um, it was just it was something completely different and another thing to kind of lean into and get a bit of experience into um, and having a, a, that little bit of taste for the the rental market I I, I really found myself now uh, honing in on it for all the world um, and because our, we had property management as a module as well within the course it was probably what I found the most difficult um, of, a, of a module, although I came out of it, thank God, quite well, um, high marks in it. But it was something I, I had to put my head down into. And I really, but I found it so interesting. I've now went in and I'm doing property management in um, in Savills. So I've, I've just joined Savills team. Um, and it's, again, it's just been fantastic really to jump from one to the other. But you've, you've, the same industry and it's very different very different things um which i suppose every every company is different um yeah. and runs differently but it, it's been great to see that um and take information and get mentorship from different kind of different styles of of um real estate and different styles within the property uh, industry itself um i've been blessed in that and i had more rural type in tipperary and now i'm, I'm heading into more um city life of of what I'm looking at now so again it'll be an interesting journey for me ahead of me yeah well you know you learn a lot from the people you're working with um uh of course but you learn a lot from your buyers and your sellers and uh the people who come through the doors as well uh you know it's, it's something that we talk about a lot when we when we look at the you know for me today it's great to talk to you just starting out because um uh, yesterday, I had the great fortune of being down with uh, Piano Gorman down in Nuras, a firm that is celebrating 100 years. Wow. And I got to speak to Anne and Philip Carton down there. And Anne uh, has been operating in this market um, really uh, second, second and third generation down there now uh, operating in the market. And it was fabulous to hear really over the last 60 years um, 50 to 60 years how the property industry has evolved and you know there are some things that have changed a lot and there's some things that haven't changed at all and that <laughs> is the power of your network and your reputation and trust and the integrity in which you present and how you make people feel at a really vulnerable and emotional time in their life and these are things that haven't changed and yeah. so I, I love that you've honed in on that because you know that that's really what it's all about. So I, I I talk a lot about the technology and the tools and that's what I'm excited about and the marketing and, you know, all, all the ways in which we can now present properties. Um, But I do know at the heart of it all, these are humans. This is yeah. their home and, and you're dealing with them at a, a, you know, for some it can be, of course, very exciting time, but it can be yeah. a very emotionally charged time for, for positive and negative. And these are things you have to navigate. Um. Grace, what surprised you? Um, you know, when when you know, I suppose from the time you considered, okay, this could be an interesting career, to then actually getting out and meeting people, um, and actually getting started, what surprised you about a state agency that maybe you didn't or that you weren't expecting? Um, I suppose a lot of it actually. Well, the biggest surprise for me was how much you, time you do spend with people in that them stages of vulnerability um that period between going sale agreed to actually getting your keys you know handed over that it can vary in time lengths depending on circumstances um and it just having to balance that between their worries and their excitement and trying to juggle that at the same time as reassuring them but also trying to get everything in, in line here with us and making sure contacting going solicitors and it was an awful lot more to it than I had ever anticipated um mm -hmm. you know when you when you don't see that side of it get like you're shown on shows all the fun sides of seeing the properties and looking at them and seeing how fabulous the interiors are or whatever it is you don't see the side of it once they go sale agreed and the process of getting the keys how much worry can come into people's minds how much doubt can come into their mind and how much you know they, they might have to come back and see another viewing and bring their families on and their families with questions um and just the reassurance in that in that and i you, like you said it's a very vulnerable time it can be very exciting 
um, and it can be fantastic for some people and other people it can find it very difficult um, and I just I suppose that was a, a kind of a different thing that I, I never had thought of prior, prior to it I just always assumed it was a it was just an excitement you know there's yeah. this just brilliant you know you're delighted once you go sail agreed and it's not always the case you know sometimes you can come back with an engineer's report and it might it might fall apart for someone um, and it can be very disheartening for them and you might have them you know lose the, the the interest in looking at properties and come back to you again and go okay you have another one that's really piques my interest and we're we're really mad to go see it. so it's it's that like I, I something I never I, I suppose I'd seen my my own sister buying going viewing properties and I'd seen from family members doing it but having not been on the other side of it it, it, it wasn't it was very different a perspective really so I guess that was a big shocker for me um yeah. but I suppose a lot of it was a shock you know a lot of it's learning um but yeah no it was it was very different in that sense too you know um you touched on something that actually uh somebody I spoke with earlier today said to me and I I, I hadn't really thought about it and uh, this is somebody who is 30 years. I spoke to somebody who's 30 years in the residential uh, estate agency side of things in Dublin earlier today. And he was talking actually about the next generation of talent coming in. And and um, and he said what was really surprising is that you can have people working as an estate agent now for 10 years who uh, they've never bought or sold their own home. Some of them haven't even rented maybe their own home. And that's quite unusual because this is the first generation maybe that people would be working for 10 or 15 years and not be in a position to buy their own home because of the utter chaos in our uh, and um, the broken dynamics of our um, housing supply. Uh, but you know, it was something that was really, I hadn't thought about before, but it is, it, it is an interesting perspective because you haven't, you haven't experienced waiting to know will yeah. your keys come in will you close on time have a uh, maybe a moving truck loaded and ready to go um, and knowing that that would be doubly more stressful if you were selling and then buying on the right, same day yeah. um, you know so these are all new things to navigate and <coughs> excuse me for you and and many of the people not all who would have been on your course really you're the first generation of digital natives to come in and uh, and and work in this industry. So, what is your attitude towards maybe um the tools and the technologies that are available to you? Um, you know, maybe the way social media is being used. I'm sure you've sensed a real fear around social media and some of the digital tools um across some of the agents or some you know, not just the agents that agencies that you've worked in, but even you know a, across the wider industry at this point. Yeah, um, no, I, I would, I, I suppose I was quite lucky in the, in the sense of the first, um, the first state agency I was working in, they were my first thing to come, like why they wanted to bring on was their social media. Um, so that was why I honed in on immediately because I suppose it's my generation. It would, I was up to speed with the trends on TikTok. I was, you know, I knew everything that was going on. I knew how to make Canva ed edits on on um for social media to make templates and that so I, I got stuck into that and I got great experience and I, I really really loved it and it, it stood to me for marketing and marketing experience and getting out there versus coming into a different type of a of an estate agent who didn't use social media um and didn't wouldn't see the the prevalence and why why would you use it or why what would be the point of it very different styles but again it's it's each is individual and there can be mm. um, a selling point for both. You know, some yeah. some people just don't like their property being put up onto social media and they don't like that idea. Other people find it very attractive um, because it gets broader, like you get a broader viewers, you get more audience looking at it, you get a higher, like you might get someone that would have never have thought of looking in that area, would sit, look at the property and go, that's very reasonable money or it's, fantastic property and you wouldn't find that where I am and they consider going to see it so I suppose for myself and in my generation I can see why social media is so important um, and I myself would would be a big advocate for it to say the more social media and more advertising you can do using it it is the new way of doing it you know that's that's where it's at it's where the generations coming up from are going on 
Yeah. But like you said, a lot of our generation aren't in position to buy property. So it's it's a, a so so moment. But again, if you don't start, it's it's not going to roll into each other. Um, and there will come a point that our generations will have to be buying the properties and inflation rates will slow down and, and interest rates might come back, which you're seeing it at the moment anyway. Mm. And it'll become more affordable and we will be looking at properties and that's where we'll go. Uh, I see myself in, in general, I'm a devil for it on my TikTok. I'd have, it's just purely viewings and, you know, going through properties and different ones. And I love them. I love, <laughs> love, love them. I find them so soothing. It's, yeah. it's my algorithm has just honed in on me yeah. completely. Um, so I love seeing them, you know, and it, it does. It inspires me because I'm going, God, I love that. Like, I, I love how they did that. And I love how you saw that. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's we're going towards leaning more towards there than people are, aren't going on to, you know, the, the general sites or the more usual sites. But again, they are. Their daft is very prevalent. It's, it's probably the biggest one that we're using. Um, I, I know myself, I'm I go on to it sometimes just to have a look and to know. Just and to brag. Same. So are some of my friends, you know, we'd be sending each other and as you know, as if we'd be able to buy them in the morning, this is what we'd be and we'd be sending going, isn't that fabulous? You know, it's not gorgeous, isn't that lovely location? And look at the view from that house. And yeah. God, if we had money, wouldn't we buy it? Like, um, but it is, it's social media and them tools are are so important. We it's it's really coming on, and it is in these generations that we really have to focus in on, I suppose, and use use them to our advantage um and get the exposure and, and use that to it. You know, um, when you started the campaign uh, down in Tipperary, uh, were the people in the office surprised at the digital reach and the fact that you were able to tell them the digital reach? Um, now, I was, I, Mikey was fantastic. He he loved it. He was able to show the insights and like he knew straight away, but he would have been very witted anyway. He would have known the crack of this is what's coming on and these are what what what's is up and coming. You know, this is the reach that you're getting. Some of them were fantastic and they they were viral. They went viral, you know, getting over the quarter of a million views on it. And they're the ones that you just have to take a step back and even not even just for him, for myself. They go, wow, this is where, you know, you'd never see that anywhere else on a on a general site for a house that was like it might have been a fantastic house. It could have been the something looked in, like funny inside that they people honed, honed in on, on the on the comments or the price can be a big one for people. They'll all start coming in and it just comments and the reach and building and building and building it. Um, now, look, like all social media, not all of it is fantastic. You can get negative things coming in on it. So it's navigating around that and having to kind of say to yourself, look, there's these are people behind screens that aren't, you know, the, it, it can be sometimes it can just yeah. be nothing. Oh, really, that's, you know? Unfortunately, that is par for the course. And I suppose one of the other things that we're, really still in the process of trying to figure out is um the conversion rate uh you know so on other digital tools we might have a more direct line of sight of the conversion rates whereas on social media you have the engagement um so you see the reach you may or may not get an email or a phone call about it and um, so it's just more difficult to know how effective yeah. as maybe a business development tool social yeah. media is but I, I i think it's a really important awareness um, and to point people in the direction, not just potential buyers for the property that you're listing, but also then uh, people who are thinking of selling in the area, see, yeah. OK, this this brand knows what it's doing. This agent looks like they're going maybe above and beyond. Uh, so you might be front and centre when they're thinking of getting their home valued or potentially selling or whatever it is. Um, Grace, I'm conscious that we have to finish up today, but I suppose... From your perspective, is there anything, you know, that you you are, you know, are, are there any ambitions that you have now that you are getting started? Um, You know, you've you've seen now you've had the nice cross section of rural, rural, regional and urban. You know, are there any ambitions? What are your ambitions really over the next number of years? Um, I suppose for the next it's short term will be gain, gaining as much experience as I can. Having just came up to Dublin and moved up here. Um, and I'm starting to settle in a little bit more. The, the the short term goal is to gain as much experience and to start learning and soak in from people, my colleagues and from my team and just in general from networking within it 
Um, but also, I suppose the end game is to to get enough experience and to go home and to possibly open my own business, uh, which would be a, a real dream. Like, um, I suppose everyone will say that too. But for myself, that was I, I've always had a kind of an entrepreneurial spirit within myself um, and kind of give back to the community that I've been I've been raised by. You know, I, I wasn't just family it was a community of people that bring you up in especially in a smaller town. Um, and to, to hopefully go back and, and help them along and them help me and we can support each other and opening a business and, and getting things going again. But that's that's long term. So short, short term is gain the experience and, and learn as much as I can and, and meet as many people as I can and, and learn from them and make mistakes. That's a big one. You know, make the mistakes while I can uh, because yeah. everyone does. You know, everyone will make mistakes. So I suppose to make as many mistakes as I can possibly make in over the next few years and learn as much as I can from them. Very good. Grace, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. And it is so clear to me that you have an entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, we talked about the jobs that you've done from room sprayer to groom as well as bar work. But actually, we did leave out the part that you've already been an entrepreneur, that your first foray into entrepreneurship was at 10 years of age, supplying the people of Temple more with rabbits and guinea pigs. So oh, you all, yeah. you've already got your first business under your belt. Oh, Jeepers, boy, God bless my parents. They were just fantastic for facilitating me. I don't know how they put up with it really, but yeah, I I sure I, I was one of those people that wanted to. I was selling rabbits to selling homes, so that's how I how it goes really. But I love it. The upbringing of it. Oh, Grace, I I am so delighted I had the chance to talk to you today, and genuinely, I'm really excited to watch your career as it progresses. And I, I you know, genuinely, uh, w- without uh, sounding as old as I feel, it, it's really exciting to see the next generation of talent come in and bring new energy, new enthusiasm, and hopefully new ways of doing things and critique the stuff that isn't working. There's a lot of that needed. So genuinely, even though it's, it's fantastic to be humble and ready to learn, don't be afraid to point out when you see things, there are so many areas of the property market that aren't working. Um, and if it is very clear to you that that's the case and you feel like there might be a potential solution there, don't ever think that somebody else is going to come up with that. Um, you know, it, when you see something and a potential solution, definitely talk about it because we need your generation to come in and, and try put right what we didn't over the last 25 years. Um, but that that's a lot of pressure to put on your shoulders today, <laughs> isn't it? Just a small bit of pressure. <laughs> but you look, we work well under pressure always. Fantastic. Genuinely, Grace, you're such an advocate for uh, the apprenticeship programme. I look forward uh, to our paths crossing again. And genuinely, I'm, I'm excited to see how your career progresses. Thank Sarah, you so thank much. You. Thank uh, you and so by the way, for me. Uh, I feel like I should say that you were so dedicated to your work that we're actually finishing this interview a quarter, quarter to eight in the evening. Because <laughs> that's what that's what entrepreneurship is all about. Um, so genuinely, thank you for accommodating me after a very long day uh, that you've had. Uh, really appreciate it. So that was Grace Hanley, apprentice auctioneer and property service provider. My thanks as always to Katie Talon and to the production team at Hear Me Roar Media. And of course, huge thanks to our show sponsor, Daft.ie, Ireland's most visited property website. And Grace and her friends are only a, only a fraction of that. Um, Thank you indeed for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode of the Property Roundup. In the meantime, please be sure to check out all of the other Irish uh, construction and real estate, uh, both Irish and international real estate construction shows on iPropertyRadio.com. 